Hallelujah. Lift your Bibles high. Y'all ready for the word today? Lift your Bibles high. Let's make our confession of faith together. This is my Bible. It is the living word of God. My mind is renewed and my spirit is prepared to receive the word which produces faith and faith pleases God. I'm not just the hearer of the word. This word. Shout it out. I am. Hallelujah. Remain standing if you would. Flip to Acts chapter number 16. Acts chapter number 16. Of course, last uh, week we finished our series, The Gospel. How many people you enjoyed that series? Hallelujah. So, so today is uh, free throw day. Acts chapter 16. And I want you to get to verse number 1. Acts 16, number 1. You got it? Hallelujah. If you're still flipping, that's all right. You can look on the screens. Verse 1. Then he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, there was a disciple there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by uh, of the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted uh, to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews that were in that region, for everyone knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. So look at me. Here's what they're doing. Paul, they're going. And he's now got Timothy, who is adopted as a spiritual son to him. And they're traveling and they're giving the decrees and the order that the leaders of the church had set so that all the churches can be together in unity. You with me? Now look at verse 5. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone through Phygeria in the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Now that, that, that's a bit of a paradox because why would God prevent them from preaching? <laughs> okay, I can see we're going to have to dig this experience. All right, verse 7. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So now we've got two instances where they're trying to do a good thing, but obviously it's not a God thing. Verse 8, so passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. <laughs> Father, you hear me and you always hear me. I thank you that over these next few moments as I share and deliver your word, Father, that we would understand that there is a blessing in things that you block. Amen. That we would understand that sometimes everything that's blocked is not the devil. Everything that's blocked is not a satanic attack. But sometimes it's you that's blocking certain things that look good, but they're just not God. And we thank you for everything that you've blocked this far. Open our spirits to receive now in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As you take your seats, high five somebody. Say, God blocked it. God blocked it. God blocked it. You can be seated. Uh, too often we assume that everything that doesn't go according to our plan is a bad thing or it's something of the enemy. And often we make the miscalculated assumption that all resistance is a sign to press harder. Uh, that all resistance is a sign that we need to pray more. That all resistance is a sign that we need more faith. But the text makes it clear that that's not always the case. It, it, it seems even paradoxical that God would allow them to see an open door to do something good but then he is the one that prevents them from walking through that door. I, I, has anybody in the place ever been in a situation like that where you think you know that what you're looking at is God's plan for you to do only to get there and have God to be the one that blocks you from pursuing the plan? It seems almost cruel that God would allow you to see a great open door and then the moment you walk up to the door, he shuts the door in your very face. And that is what happened now to Paul and Timothy because the scripture says the Holy Spirit forbid or prevented them from preaching the word. Now preaching is a good thing. The people need the word, but it is God himself that stops them. Touch your neighbor say sometimes God blocks it. Sometimes God... God is so awesome because he is the only one that is able to play chess with himself. 
Uh, God is in his great awesomeness. God has been playing chess with himself throughout your life, always positioning you just right for what he has planned for your life. See, I'm here to let you know you may think that it's not going to work out and you may think that things aren't going to happen, but I'm here to tell you God has invested too much into you, saving you and healing you and pulling you out of the mess that you were in. And I'm here to tell you he's not going to lose on his investment. I dare you to touch somebody and say, God's not going to lose. He's not going to lose. The scripture says that the steps of a righteous man, who's the righteous folk? Us. Why? Because he's given us his righteousness. Not because we do everything right, but because he did one thing just right. When he went up to Calvary and paid the penalty for my sin, he made me his righteousness, which means he orders my steps, which means sometimes he'll tell me to step left only to block that door. Are you still here? Now, 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 now. It says the Holy Spirit forbid or prevented them from preaching the word. But now notice this. He only prevented them from preaching in certain places. He didn't say they couldn't do it. He just said not in those places at that time. Let me translate for your neighbor. He wasn't saying you got to be single forever. He was just saying not them and not now. He wasn't saying you'll never own that business. He was just saying not this one and not at that time. Am I, am I talking to, 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 to anybody? He wasn't saying no. He was just saying not now. Such a neighbor say God blocks it. God blocks it. In fact, the scripture goes on to say that Paul went to Ephesus to preach, and Ephesus was in Asia Minor, and it spread through all, all of Asia uh, in just a little over two years. That's in Acts chapter 19, but he did that later. Say later. Uh, sometimes uh, delay does not mean denial. Sometimes there are things that God has to work in you and work out of you so that when he puts you in the place he's ordained for you, you're ready for that place. I know you wish he'd do it now, but God says you're not ready for it now. And if I put you there, you will self-destruct. And I've invested too much into you to build you up, to let you get to a certain pinnacle in life to fall. Don't wish to be a, a shooting star because they fall fast. Just your neighbor say God blocked it. Now, 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 look at this, look at this, look at this. Asia looked like the next logical door because of the mission they were on. He, he, he's an apostle. He's preaching the gospel. They are establishing churches. And Asia now is this great region that has been untouched, uh, uh, untouched. It's been untapped. And so it looked logical. Uh, what I found out, though, is what looks logical to us normally makes no sense to God. Matter of fact, the scripture says, and as they went through the cities, they delivered the decrees to them, which were determined by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened and faith and increased in number daily. But God doesn't do things in a way that makes sense to us. That's why the scripture says his thoughts are not like ours. They're higher than ours because to Paul, Asia was, it made sense. And you've heard me say before that if it makes sense to you, it probably ain't quite right. Say God blocked it. Now, 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 watch this, watch this. The reason God does things differently is not just to aggravate us or to annoy us or to keep us on this never-ending quest to try to find something that he's already made uh, unfindable, if you will. I know that's not a word, but you understood what I meant when I said it. It's because he works differently. Isaiah 46.10 says this. He declares the end of a thing from the beginning. And from ancient times, there are things that are yet done. He says, my counsel shall stand, and I will do my pleasure. Here's how God works. God says, I don't start at A. I start at Z and start walking backwards because I know everything you're going to need to take to get to Z. God says, I don't count from A to Z. God says, I'll start at Z, but I know to get you to Z, you're going to need a. No. You're going to need a Y. But before you can get to Y, you're going to need a. Okay, all right. Just want to make sure now. One. So God says, I, 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 I don't start at one. I start at three, but to get to three, you're going to need a. 
See, that's why some of the stuff you went through didn't make sense to you while you were in it. But when you got out of it and you turned around and looked back at it, it made perfect sense. Because you were looking from Z back at your Y and said, I understand why I had to go through that. Because with no why, I can't get to my... Say, God blocked it. God blocked it. Now, now watch this. It says, they were forbidden to go into Asia. Now, you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. This is what does that mean? You got to read it in. You got to read it out. That means you got to know more than just the surface level of the text. Now, here's what Asia means. Asia, in its etymology, means to go outside of. <laughs> he prevented them from going into Asia. Because Asia didn't just represent a literal place. It represented a spiritual place. Okay, okay, maybe y'all will get it on this set. Yeah. He said, I'm not letting you go to Asia because you're going to go outside of my plan when you get there. There were some places and some people, can I just tell you, there were some nouns, some persons, some places, some things, and some ideas that God blocked in your life because he said they're in Asia to you. They're going to cause you to go outside of my will. They're going to cause you to go outside of my plan. So I'm not letting you go to Asia because I already know you're going to get outside when you go over there. And so you thought it was going to work out just perfect because you thought you knew them and you had went to school with them. And so you had history. God says, but I knew they were going to take you outside of my plan and outside of my will. So God says, clink, clink, I blocked it. Touch your neighbor, say God blocked it. Now, then the scripture says they had come to Mysia. Uh, that is Asia Minor or modern day Turkey. And they passed by it. And for the second time, God blocks them uh, from going there when they attempted to go the second time. So I, I studied Mysia, Asia Minor, Tur modern day Turkey. And I said, well, why would God prevent them from going there and only let them pass by it enough to see it? Oh, because it's found in what Mysia means. It means the place of Achilles. Okay, your neighbor obviously can't hear me. W watch this. Maisha, watch this. Here's the history. It was uh, an understanding uh, that uh, in Greek mythology uh, that Achilles, Achilles was thought to be a great uh, invulnerable warrior, uh, but Achilles died because of a small wound on his heel. Hence the term Achilles heel. Achilles heel is just a euphemism for a person's principal weakness. Now, can, can, can we dive six feet wider just real quick? Now, Bishop, why would Greek mythology be hidden in the Bible? I'll tell you why. Because Dr. Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, which was really an extension of the gospel of Luke, he was a Greek. So he knew the stories of Greek mythology. So what he did is as opposed to calling it Asia Minor, he calls it Mysia, which means he hides in the text that in this place, this is the place of Achilles, which means he hid Greek mythology in there, knowing that when a Greek person read it, they know that the reason God kept them from going there was not because God didn't want those people to hear the gospel, but because when Paul and Timothy got there, they were going to find their greatest weakness there. Oh, God, did you hear what I just said? There are some nouns, some people, and some places, and some things, and some ideas that God says, I knew if I let you hook up with them, or I knew if I let you went to that place, that you would activate your greatest weakness. It would be your Achilles heel. And so I let you see it, but I did not let you into it because I knew that it would be your destruction. Okay, I can't get nobody to say nothing. He says, I didn't let you go there because I didn't want you to activate your greatest weakness. Here's the truth of the matter. There are places and there are things and there, there, there are things that if you see it, you already know it's going to activate something in you. That you feel like Paul sometimes. I, I, I wish to do right. But every time I wish to do right, evil's right there. Okay, come on, can we be honest to David? You, you, you may say to yourself, I, I, Lord, I want to do the right thing, but every time I want to do the right thing, it just seems like evil. God says, so I block you from going outside of my plan, and I block you from your own greatest weakness. Touch your neighbor and say, God blocked it. 
Oh, okay, okay, I can see I ain't got nobody with me. So, okay, okay. So then God, you think they had enough blocking. Then God says, from Asia Minor, I'm not letting you go into Bithynia. Scripture says they tried to go, but the Holy Spirit prevented them from going. Now, my question is, is what methodology did he use to prevent them? Because maybe it was controversy. Scripture doesn't say how he prevents them. It just says he prevents them. The natural assumption would be, well, the Lord spoke to them. That's not what it says. It says he prevented them. Which means God says, I'll use whatever, whoever, whenever, in order to block something. God says, I'll use betrayal to block somewhere you don't need to be. Okay, I, I can't get nobody to say nothing. Preach, Bishop. All right, I will. God says, I'll use deep hurt and pain to block you from going somewhere you have no business being. He says, I'll use whatever. So now we come to Bithynia. And so now again, God blocks them. Now I said, God, why? Why would, you, why would you block them? And when you study Bithynia, you get into a lot of Greek mythology and the Greco-Roman culture, but it doesn't really have an etymology for the name. So then I figured out that uh, Bithynia wasn't Paul's territory. First Peter chapter 1 tells us that Bithynia was a territory God had assigned Peter to. Now just flow with me for a moment. Uh, Peter was very effective at reaching a certain group of people. Paul was very effective at reaching a certain group of people. And God would not allow Paul to go into an area where Peter was equipped to go. Okay, okay, okay. If y'all just roll with me, we can get this. Peter was anointed. That means he was given grace and favor by God. He was gifted and he was talented to do things there that Paul wasn't anointed for. That is the reason why God created places before he created people, because when you get in the right place, uh, what's on the person will, will become activated. You never see the genius of a fish until you put it in the right place. What's the right place? Water. You'll think a fish is an idiot if you put him on a table because he's just there flapping. But when you stick him in water, all of a sudden his gift comes alive. All of a sudden his talent comes alive. That's why it is about being in the right place at the right time. Because if I'm not in the right place, I'll look like a fool. Because my gift and my talent and my grace is not being used. So God says to Paul, I'm not letting you go to where Peter's anointed. Because when you get there, you're going to try to act like him. And I don't need you to act like him. I need you to be in. If I wanted two Peters, I would have made two Peters. So you can't go there because you're going to try to act like him. And the worst thing a believer can do is try to act like something they've not been gifted to be. So God blocks him from Athenia because it wasn't his lane. And had he went there, he would have spent all of his time trying to do what Peter did, not understanding it wasn't something Peter did, but it was something that was on Peter. Okay. You think after this, God would leave him alone. But now we have <laughs> a fourth instance here where the scripture says, after God prevents him from being in the wrong place, which is assigned to another man, he says, watch this, he says, he says to him, uh, he sees a vision of a man in the province of Macedonia. Now, now, you think, okay, what is God doing? What is God up to? He's blocked him from going to Asia, Mysia, and Bithynia. So now how is God getting ready to play with him? Remember, this isn't a game for God. This is about divine positioning and divine timing. He sees a vision of a man saying, come to Macedonia and help us. And he concludes that it was God's will for him to go to Macedonia. What does Macedonia mean, Bishop? That is a wonderful, very intelligent question you've asked. Macedonia means the place of the highlanders. Let me go ahead and break it down. It means a place where high people dwell. It's a high place. <laughs> God
God says, you're not going to the place where you're going to get out of my will. I'm not going to let you to get to the place where you're going to activate your Achilles heel. And I'm not letting you go to another man's territory. What I'm going to do is send you to a high place where you're going to be able to do great things. And it was in this high place that you remember the story in Acts chapter 16 where they were thrown into prison. And the Bible says at midnight when Paul and Silas began to praise God that the prison began to shake and the doors began to open. And it was in that place, Macedonia, where the Philippian jailer was saved. And that Philippian jailer is the man that starts the church at Philippi. Uh, it is in that place, Macedonia, where he starts a brand new church at Corinth and much more. God says, I blocked all of these moves in your life to get you to a fruitful place to get you to a high place don't you be crying over what I blocked because if you just get into what I've opened he took him to a fruitful place touch your neighbor say a fruitful place sometimes God will prevent us from a certain goal at a time when it's not divine that's why God would back something. That's why he would do it. He would do it because of divine timing. The scripture says in Ecclesiastes, there is a time appointed for every purpose under the sun. And God says, there are things I will block when the timing's not right. And you just have to know that if I'm preventing you from getting somewhere, it's because you're exactly where you need to be for now. I can't hear nobody. I, I can't hear nobody. If you feel like your dreams are stalling and your goals are in a holding pattern, don't assume you've made a mistake. It's going to happen. It just has to happen at divine timing. He's not saying never. He's just saying not now. Bishop, why? The first reason, fine. First reason he, he, he blocked something is because maybe you're not equipped for it yet. Maybe there's more you need to learn. Maybe there's some things you need, to, you, you need to get an understanding of. Maybe there's some people you got to run into that are necessary for the next leg of your journey. See, people are like scaffolding. Some of them are only there to build you to a certain place. Okay, all right. He says, he says, he, he says, maybe you're not ready for it yet. I know you think you are. But the reality is, is you don't know if you are until the pressure of that level settles down on you. See, you say, I'm ready, I'm ready. Lord, make me, make me a star. I want to be a star. And God says, but you can't even handle Sister Cantaloupe talking about you. How are you going to handle getting written up in the National Enquirer and in the star? God, I'm ready to be somebody. God, I'm ready for a million bucks. And God says, but you can't even do right by the 35000 I'm giving you now. Maybe you're not ready or equipped for it yet. But the second reason, the second reason that, 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 that God would block something is maybe it's not ready for you. Maybe it's not that you're ill-prepared. Maybe it's that it's not ready for you. Now, that's, that's quite an enigma there because it suggests that God says, when you get there, oh, watch this. <laughs> when you get there, I want everything to be set just right. Have you ever gone to, to a place where you had a reservation? Maybe this is just me. Let me talk about myself. That way your neighbor don't feel bad. Uh, you ever gone to a place where you had a reservation, and despite your reservation, when you arrived at the designated time, they weren't ready for you? And you thought to yourself, self, why then did I bother spending that $1.75 to call 411? To get the number to the place, well, I guess now you can Google it, but to, to get the number to the place, to call them, to set a pre-designated time for my arrival, and when I arrive, you act like we didn't talk four hours ago. What God says is sometimes I'll block you from a certain place at a certain time because when you get there, it's not going to be set up for you. When you get there, it's not going to be ready for you. So God says, I know you were qualified for the job, but I blocked it because they weren't ready for you. Somebody shout, God blocked it. 
Now here's the enigma because here's the enigma because I know the question everybody has on their mind is how do we discern when we should yield to God blocking something and how do we know when God wants us to be like David and pursue something? That's the dichotomy that we face because how do I know if this is God saying wait or if this is God saying fight? Because both messages look the same. Okay. All right. Okay, let's dig. Okay. Here's the truth of the matter. Both messages of God saying wait and God saying pursue and fight look exactly the same. Prevention. And there are some things that God says, now I want to see how bad you want it. But then there are certain things that God says, I want to see how good you listen. Because there are some things God says, I don't want you to pursue. I want you to yield to the fact I said no. There are certain things God says, I don't want you to get on the phone and fight. I just want you to sit back and let it be what it is. So the greatest enigma we face with God blocked it is, how do I know when he's blocking something? And how do I know when he wants me to pursue something? Here's the answer right here. It's one answer. You ready for it? It's two words. It's two words. It's one phrase. You ready? Calm down. That's the point. That's the whole point. This is a one point message. Calm down. Bishop, 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 what do you mean? What, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean, calm down, Bishop? In moments of chaos and tribulation, and when plans in your life are changed without your initiation, and in your moment of panic, you lose your ability to be sensible. It's in moments of chaos you lose your ability for sensibility and you miss hearing God. Here's what the scripture says. My sheep know my voice. Check out what you do. Something happens. You know what you do? Bah, 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 bah. You're a sheep. So you know what you do? You whine and complain and backbite and murmur and do all of this talking. And God is saying, I was trying to tell you I blocked that. But you couldn't hear me because you were trying to talk at the same time I was trying to talk and I'm a gentleman I'm not gonna yell so either you yield and be quiet and let me speak or you'll be fighting a battle I never told you to initiate and you wonder why the battle's so hard is because I'm not helping you I'm not helping you because I only fight uh, 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 wars that are my will see if it's his will it's his bill your will your bill What's the point, Bishop? When you're in a moment where something that you thought was supposed to happen doesn't, you calm down and say, okay, God, talk to me. You got to be like Job. Remember Job, Job chapter 1? The messengers come and told Job, hey, Job, listen, you lost everything. Your kid's dead. Their houses are gone. Everything is gone. And you know what, you know what no, most saints do? Most say, oh, my God, Jesus. Oh, Lord, how did this happen to me? Lord, I pay my tithes. I go to church. I understand this happened. No, 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 no. Job didn't do that. Job was silent. He was silent. And the Bible says he fell to his knees and he worshiped. Because he didn't want to fight a battle that God wasn't going to come with him on. So when he worshiped, what did he find out? God was behind it all in the first place. Can I tell you something? There is power in your silence. Silence of the lambs. You get that point. Write that point down. You remember that. Write that down. The lambs need to be silent. In the season that we're in, in the season that we're in, one of the greatest lessons a father can learn is when it's time to be silent. Because you want to protect your children from this and from that and from this and from that and from this and this and this and that. To only realize that sometimes there are certain things teaching can't teach. There are certain things that only tribulation can teach. 
And sometimes as a good father, you have to stand back and just say, okay, all right, I'll tell you what. i tell you what. I have nothing to say. Silence. All the lambs and the lamettes. Because when God is blocking something, the worst thing you can do is get in his face and start fighting him to get what he blocked from you. Everybody stand on your feet. Thank you for tuning in to today's life-giving message. Harvest exists to change lives by leading people to totally love God, love people, and love life as one church in global locations. And if you have a testimony of how Harvest has changed your life, let us know on our website contact us page. We're able to continue to change lives because of the faithful giving of people just like you. And if you'd like to contribute to Harvest financially, you can do so today online at www.harvestcc.me. Remember to love God, love people and love life.